Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to mass generate detail attributes with VEX. So we are going to create a um, custom attribute wrangle where we can click on plus to create new attributes, name them, define a minimum and maximum range, and then have a seed slider that is choosing a random value within that range. In the end, we are also going to add a dictionary, so you get some nice kind of dictionary string where all the attribute names and the specific values are stored. So let's go over, switch over to Houdini and create a new document. Inside, we are going to create a geometry container with an attribute wrangle. First, we will set this to run over detail and then we're going to edit the parameter interface with a new folder. Right on top, we're going to call this fld underscore control and name it accordingly control. Within that folder, we add a, another one which is just called attribute. Attribute is also the name and Underneath this folder, we are going to put a string, a float vector 2, and a separator. Back to the string, we are going to call this name. And the vector 2 will be called range. The separator doesn't need to be named. And now let's hit apply. And we don't want a subfolder, but rather a multiparm block. So once you changed it to that and hit apply, you will get this nice plus sign. So every time you click here, we get a new field for parameters. If you hover over the name, for example, you see it's called name one, name two, and name three in every field. Also, the ranges are named range one, two, and three. The attribute number itself is up here and it's called attribute. So I'm just repeating that because now we have to code it. And one thing we should also add is a seed slider. So you could go all the way down or rather up to integer and put this above the attribute folder and call it seed. We're going to make the range from 0 to 1000 and hit accept. So this would be our seed slider. We can also start type in some names and those are supposed to show up in the geometry spreadsheet later when we go to the detail button. Now let's go to the code and first of all access the seed by going integer seed is the channel integer of seed. If you quickly want to check whether this works, you can also replace this with an add sign and you can see here the seed is showing up with the correct number. So now let's name this back to integer seed. And the next thing we want is a for loop so for integer i, one in this case, i smaller or equal the channel integer attribute and i plus plus would be the loop. Now, there are a few a bit unusual things. First of all, we are not starting with zero, but with one. The reason being, again, that also our attributes start with the number one and not with zero. And because we still want to loop over all those fields, we have to make it run not i smaller, the attribute number, but i smaller or equal to the attribute number. And the attribute number is going to increase every time we click on plus. So this is simply seen as a loop. All right, let's 
first of all, create a string with the number. So this would be the integer to string of i. Next, we want to know the name of the attribute that has been or is going to be created, which is a channel string name. And we are going to add the num. Let's do something very similar for the vector to range, which is channel u range plus num. Now, this should be everything we need to access this. Let's just go back to our control tab to get into the thinking. So this could range from zero to one and the next one from two to five point six seven or so. If you want to bring in a bit more user friendliness, you could also edit the parameter and set the range from the standard range from, let's say, uh, 0 to 1 and go to the channels and predefine the maximum to 1. So that way, when I click on plus, the new parameters will all have a nice range from 0 to 1 by standard. All right. So what else do we need? to actually create uh, these uh, attributes, it should be a simple matter of, first of all, creating a specific value within that range. So that would be a float. And we want to create this randomly based on the current iteration, which is i and our seed value. And this is between 0 and 1. So we need to fit O1 this between the range, range's first component, 0, and the range's second component. Don't forget to close the bracket. And that way, we should have a random value that we can now used to create an attribute. So set detail attrib comes with a bunch of arguments. So the geometry handle would be zero because we're working on our own geometry string. The name would be, well, the name of the, uh, the attribute, whatever has been entered there the value would be val, and we're going to set it. So zero name val set. And there you go. This would be the names we have chosen. And when I click on plus, I can just type something here. And it would choose something between five and six. When I say this, I would see here it says hello and it's chosen 5.1 something and now the seed would change this but it would never leave the range between five and six. Great, so that would be a nice base to um, actually create lots of random values, let's just say we have a radius um, a between um, one and two and a radius underscore b between 0.2 and 0.4 or five. The others are not important, so I just remove them and I can control this, uh, name this wrangle control. Now. In the end, I would like to wrap this all up to a dictionary. So there's an attribute adjust dictionary node that can just use all the attributes. So let's just call this the DNA of my object. 
and now it's waiting for some inputs. So what I can use is import attributes and put an asterisk in there. And you see I get this kind of list which, with the string name of my attribute and then the value that has been chosen. So when you export this detail attribute, you have uh, one list you can use in your pipeline. So let's set up a torus and merge it with the other streams. So in the end, you would have that dictionary and the geometry in one stream. So let's just, to, to make this complete, let's just set the radius to the detail control node and choose radius underscore A and zero and copy the same over to the second parameter field which says radius underscore B just like we have called it here and now when you play with the radii or with the seed rather both radii are being changed we can choose a bit more drastic radii or at least ranges and if you want to you can also bring over the parameters to the fields so if this is the radius uh, for the uh, circumference you can give a, a certain resolution and choose the same for the second radius that's called red y so usually they are changed like this exactly so uh, it's vice versa so red y is in the rows and red x in the columns so now we should be able to just play with that and randomize our objects thank you for watching